Good evening and welcome to the News on Canada English with me, Regina Fonji Aleke. We'll begin with some of the major stories we are following this day. Prime Minister, Head of Government, Philemon Yang, was today interrupted in Parliament by rioting SDF members of Parliament who insisted that the Anglophone problem should be included for discussion in Parliament. He was circled by MPs as he presented the Economic and Social Programme for 2018. We we'll bring you all the details in this newscast. And President Paul Bia is currently in Côte d'Ivoire where he has attended the opening session of the fifth edition of the European Union African Union Summit in Abidjan. Amongst other issues, the leaders have condemned in very strong terms the modern day slavery that is ongoing in Libya. Still in this newscast, People living with disability are often disadvantaged and discriminated upon. As Cameroon joins the world to celebrate uh, the Disability Week, we tell you the efforts that are being made to fight exclusion. Those were the major stories, their developments and more just right ahead. Now, four servicemen have been killed in Agwokem at German in the manual division of the southwest region of the country. They were assassinated on, uh, or rather, they were assassinated. On the night of Tuesday, November the 28th, breaking this Wednesday, November the 29th, by unknown persons. They include Staff Sergeant T. Julius Angu, Vola Vola Victor, Yinda Ndobekwon, and Nontromio Marie Raphael. The Minister Delegate at the Presidency in Charge of Defense, Joseph Betty Asomo, has condemned the act, calling it act of terrorism. He has also extended words of condolence to the bereaved families. Now, Prime Minister and Head of Government Philemon Yang was today interrupted by members of Parliament of the Social Democratic Front as he presented the Economic and Social Program of the year 2018. The MPs who, so, who circled the Head of Government insisted for the opt-in time that the Anglophone a crisis should be included as one of the big topics of discussion in a Parliament. The Head of Government, or rather they told the House, was thrown into total confusion as the MP his chanted songs, sending a clear message to the head of state. Our reporter Tabby Clarkson was at the Glass House and now reports. It was by 11.35 a.m. this Wednesday morning that House Speaker Kavayege Jibril opened the floor in the House of Assembly. Then came a minute of silence to honor the gendarmes who lost their lives this morning in Baminda. Ten minutes later, that is by 11.46 a.m., Prime Minister Philemon Yang was asked by the Speaker of the House to present the economic and social program for the year 2018. As Philemon Yang was about to begin his presentation, Honorable Joseph Mbanazem, SDF parliamentary group leader, stood up to say nothing can be presented in Parliament when Anglophones are dying almost on a daily basis. The SDF is saying this. We have done everything possible. We have written to you. We have written to government. We have written to the head of state. And we are saying our country, our country is moving towards a destination which before long we will not be able to control. The SDF has indicated all what is happening in the country. And last, uh, last week I told you that this house cannot sit and, and pretend that everything is just normal, that things are going on well. We cannot be going on well in, uh, uh, in Betua. Children are going to school in Betua. And then in, uh, I don't know where, in, uh, in Babanki, and wherever other children are not going to school and we think that it is correct with their peace plans SDF MPs started singing a way to showcase their disagreement vis-a-vis -vis the Yaoundé government despite the disturbing nature of SDF MPs Prime Minister Philemon Yang went on with his presentation. 
temps suivant de venir d'environ 23 km pour un coût total de 38 milliards. As the Prime Minister left the House of Assembly by 5 minutes past 1 p.m. alongside other members of government, the question on every lip is for how long will SDF MPs keep on disturbing deliberations in the House of Assembly? And well, why the SDF MPs try to obstruct uh, the speech of uh, the head of government? The head of state has attended the opening uh, ceremony of the fifth edition of the African Union European Union Summit taking place in Côte d'Ivoire's capital, Abidjan. Today's discussion focused on how states can empower youths to effectively contribute to the development of their continent. President Paul Beer and other heads of state also used the occasion to condemn the modern form of slavery taking place in Libya, Morocco, and Tunisia. Over 80 heads of state are attending the summit, including French President Emmanuel Macron. And talking about the modern form of slavery that is ongoing in uh, Libya and other countries, dozens of uh, Cameroonian migrants have arrived at Cameroon's economic capital, uh, Douala. Now, they fled from uh, slavery in uh, Morocco, Tunisia, and Libya. They were received at the Douala International Airport by the governor of the littoral region, Ivaha, Samuel Ivaha Djedone. We have the details in the following report with Annette Efeti Esome. <laughs> Shouts of joy for migrants as they return home after a long period of torture in Morocco and Libya as they attempted to enter Europe. We are happy to be back in our country. We have suffered so much. We thank God who brought us back to the country. We took the migrants from Niger and helped send them back to their different countries. The dozen of migrants who arrived at the Douala International Airport on Tuesday were received by the governor of the littoral region, Samuel Djedene Ivahadiboa, a team of medical experts charged with taking care of these migrants were also at the airport. On behalf of the head of state, we want to let you know every Cameroonian is precious, no matter where he finds himself. The pains undergone by these young people are visible on their faces, and they have continued to tell their ordeals. We spent five days in the desert. There was a woman with a baby amongst us who finally died because there was no water. They abandoned us. They gave us water mixed with foil. The Moroccan police arrested, beat us up, and I still feel the pains. After making several futile attempts crossing the sea into Europe, those young migrants were left with no choice but to return home. Well, just a reminder that uh, the government of Cameroon's action to bring back its youth comes uh, after videos went viral on the internet demonstrating how African migrants are bought and sold as slaves in Libya. Now, we'll now talk something uh, different where uh, persons living with uh, disabilities are often marginalized and are disadvantaged as Cameroon uh, joins the rest of the world to celebrate the week uh, to mark uh, disability persons, medics and social workers are now grappling with efforts on how to improve on policy that would influence the way uh, persons living with disabilities are treated. Our reporter Kejang Henry and Temi tells us that persons living with disability have rights just like every other Cameroonian. His report. Whenever there is an accident, there is the need for emergency assistance. This is what these specialists in emergency medicine are doing in Yaoundé in case of an unfortunate health situation. How to administer first aid? is their main objective here. Good day. If you are listening to me, then hold my hands. 
Open your eyes and stretch your legs. These workshops on emergency medical care is holding at the Yaoundé Emergency Hospital. Cameroonian specialists in emergency care from Belgium are working in synergy with rescue professionals of the Yaoundé Fire Department, dispensing knowledge to medical students and the public on how to improve on emergency care in Cameroon. If you look at all the accidents that occur in Cameroon, be it on social media or real life, unfortunately the population has not got the mastery to manage it. And so it becomes difficult for them. We must adapt in relations with the context in which we find ourselves. Working in Cameroon is different from working in Belgium, whether human, social or infrastructural. Social infrastructure. In order to achieve these, there must be a veritable synergy at each level of work to bring care to the population. In times of accident, the police is needed to secure the accident site. And the rescue unit of uh, the military is equally needed to open for rescue passage for rapid evacuation. Now we need everyone on board, the administration, the journalists for information, just everybody. The objective of the Association of Cameroonian Emergency Care Doctors based in Belgium is to create awareness across the country for people to understand the importance of emergency care in an accident and disaster prone nation. A little mix of those rather a story on how uh, emergency uh, training on how emergency cases can easily be uh, attacked or rather attended to. Now we we'll now talk about uh, this story. Very few car owners in Cameroon go for road wardeners uh, document, a document which uh, determines how fit the car is to ply the road or not. And according to expert, this negligence on the part of car owners is what accounts for 20% of road accidents in uh, Cameroon. Now the sector is said to be saturated by people with fraudulent road documents. A reporter and Dee Maureen completes that story. 20% of road accidents in Cameroon have been blamed on the bad state of vehicles. A clear indication that most vehicles in Cameroon do not go for the car worthiness control that determines the state of your vehicles. The problem is further made worse of the issuance of fake car worthiness documents. According to transport experts, transporters acquire this document through fraudulent means in quarters that caused them more than 50,000 francs CFA to the detriment of car worthiness centers. That is the statistics. Officially, 20% uh, is caused by the fiscal state of the vehicle. And uh, I want to tell you that um, <clears throat> when we talk of um, fiscal state of the vehicle uh, being the, co the cause of 20% of accident, it doesn't necessarily mean that the accident was caused by the, by the fact that the vehicle was poorly controlled by the um, roadworthiness control center. The training organized by the Ministry of Transport is aimed at bringing transporters abreast with the importance of car worthiness documents. It could still be that the vehicle did not come to the center at all, or the center got its um, roadworthiness certificate from a fraudulent source. So we have all those things that come into play. We have all those things that come into play and. Um, that's why we are trying to see how to yes. set up uh, this uh, sensitization uh, meeting and to put a, a platform to which would we'll work together with uh, the transporters and the Ministry of Transport to try to solve this issue. In Cameroon, there exist 32 car wardeners centers with 15 promoters who claim the sector is seriously threatened. It should be noted the government of Cameroon loses 100 billion francs CFA in road accidents each year. Well, and still on our transport, the Douala City Council has donated tons of uh, jackets to motorbike riders in order to step up efforts to regulate the commercial motorbike sector. The jackets are proof to show that uh, the rider is in possession of the right documents. Gladys Ambodibang has a complete story. This is how commercial motorbike riders in the city of Douala who respect the norms of the sector are identified. They are in their jackets with their different colors indicating the subdivisions from which they come from. Those from the Dweller 3 area 
are dressed up with yellow jackets. It took time, but it has finally been done. It is the best way to identify bike riders. Honestly, it took time to achieve what they have done today. It is a laudable effort. The Douala City Council handed over the jackets to the first beneficiaries this November 28, 2017. The role, according to management of the City Council, is for the riders to obtain their documents, helmets, have their jackets, respect the driving codes, and be clean. The government delegate to the Douala City Council, this was reiterated by the government delegate to the Douala City Council. The most difficult part is to obtain their documents. If you don't have an identity card or a car registration document, you cannot work. It is easy for those who have obtained these documents, but difficult for recalcitrant drivers. Hundreds of bike riders who turn up for the ceremony painstakingly accepted conditions on overloading. The government delegate to the Douala City Council reminded the bike riders that they must transport one person at a time. Now, dozens of inhabitants in Pekadus, a municipality in Adwala 5, are now in a dilemma as there are fears they might be evicted from their home following an individual who is now claiming ownership of their land. The people have risen up in anger and they have protested against the seizure of their land. As you tell us, Gladys Abodiba. The population of Carrefour Grumier in the Pekadus neighborhood in Dwala has come out in protest against the appropriation of their lands by an individual. We bought the land from Mr. Yokerini in 2012. On May 12 this year, a gentleman presented himself to us with the land title and informed us of that the former land title which we own has been annulled. When we asked Mr. Yoke what was happening, he said nothing. We have only been watching the state of events. Caterpillars have been digging through the land which he had sold to other people. The heavy duty machines of the man who is claiming ownership of the plot of land were interrupted from digging further. My workers were molested by the population I still cannot identify. I am very confident of the land title I have. That is 53 by 75. That is why I am carrying out my work. I was surprised this morning when I was informed that some people were in the plots of land with cutlasses, depriving my workers from continuing work. The man says the population is claiming land which belongs to him and believes they were duped. He has advised the victims to file in a complaint. The population has in mind that I have a fake land certificate. They are free to channel a complaint to the Ministry of Housing and Land Tenure or the courts, there is a judge for such cases. There are talks of a warning from the senior divisional officer that was addressed to the population. We have never received an information from the senior divisional officer that the land belongs to Mr. Likeng. Why did he not wait for a meeting convened by the chief to give out the announcement? According to family members of the legitimate landowners, the current situation boils down to a misunderstanding between the population and Mr. Li Keng, who obtained the land from the same person who sold the land to them. There are therefore fears that many families would lose their lands in the case. Environmental story, the mangrove ecosystem is very vital for nature protection. Not only do mangroves help to combat the devastating effects of our climate change, they are also a hub for fish production. Well, unfortunately, in the Litura region, mangroves are indiscriminately exploited for commercial purposes. However, one project is trying to change that, as we hear in the following report. Mangroves, an ecosystem highly present in the littoral region, play a vital role for reproduction of different species of fish, 
climate regulator, and much more. However, today, mangroves are highly threatened because of indiscriminate exploitation. As you know, mangroves are exploited by many people for different reasons. Some exploit mangroves to construct boats in order to fetch sand. There are also others, especially fishermen, who exploit mangroves to use as firewood to dry fish. In an effort to sustainably manage mangroves, a project was in 2013 launched for its conservation and much has so far been achieved. The Mangroves Project, which also intends to empower local communities, has put in place a project for the production and commercialization of crayfish in line with a community-based approach of the protection of mangroves. At a local community in Manoka Litura region, the project has established nurseries in order to curb the wanton mangrove destruction going on in the region. The project looks forward towards restoring lost populations of mangroves, which will go a long way to combat the changing climate. And onto education, 200 young teachers have graduated from the Government Bilingual Teacher Training College in Douala with the hope of contributing to Cameroon's emergency plan by 2035. The young pedagogues were advised to exhibit their prowess in the private sector while waiting for integration into public service. Dee Maureen has the details. Joyful moments like this one, Salre, in this family, who have just seen their son taking the oath to be a devoted feature ready to impact knowledge wherever he may find himself. After all failed attempts to get unemployment, Julio Gabriel Manga sees teaching as a last resort. We have so many youths out there who are simply lodging around. They have no jobs. Some have engaged in the bike riding sector. But I'm telling them that the teaching profession is a noble one. Some of them have skills in teaching. They should just join me. Celebrations were in things as hundreds of families gathered and a niche Buna Musadi, Duala Cameroon, to witness 120 young Cameroonians graduate from the government bilingual features training college in Niesh Duala. The 120 students' teachers were told to be hardworking, disciplined, and be builders of a nation that is striving towards emergence by 2035. The director of the school said there are lots of openings for the young teachers even though they will have to exercise their duties in private schools while waiting to be integrated by government. But for how long will these fix? Gentlemen, that's how we saw it for this edition of the News on Canada English. Thanks for watching. And of course, programs continue on Canada English. And if you want to get to know more about the stories we are following, you can hook up with us on our website, www.canada.com. Have a good evening. See you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.